Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to answer a question that I get asked quite frequently. The question is, how much storage does Procreate need? And the second part is, if I were to get an iPad with the smallest storage, can I transfer the Procreate files to an external drive? All right, the answer to the first part, how much storage does Procreate need? Well, it really depends on what you are creating. Let's take a look at one example. So this file has a resolution of 4K and the file size for this is 93 megabytes. Now this file size consists of the art as well as the time-lapse recording. So with Procreate, you can choose whether or not to record the time-lapse when you are drawing. So this is the time-lapse. And after you have recorded the time-lapse, you can choose whether or not to keep it in the file or delete away. So I have chosen uh, to keep the time-lapse together with the art file. Let's see what uh, file size you are left with after you delete away the video. So to do that, I'm going to back up this file first. Let me just drag the files app here. Now, all the Procreate files are stored within the Procreate app on the iPad. You may notice this when you are using a drawing app on the iPad. When you are done with your drawing, you can close your file. You don't have to choose a location to save the file. You don't have to rename the file. That's because the file is automatically saved within the app itself. And if you were to go into the uh, folders and you take a look at files on my iPad, and you take a look at this Procreate folder, if there is one on your iPad, you will not be able to find your artwork inside this folder because it's not inside the file system. Your art is inside the Procreate app. It's not inside the file system. But you can actually choose to save your Procreate files onto your file system. But I'm not going to do that because um, it's already saved onto the iPad and if you save it onto the file system, which is also on the iPad, it's just like saving the same file twice on your iPad. It doesn't make any sense. So for me, I can choose to back up this file online, either on Google Drive or on the iCloud Drive. So in this case here, I'm going to click share and share this Procreate file. So it's going to combine the art and the video and I'm going to save it to my iCloud drive here. I'm going to choose this Procreate folder that I have created specially for this video. So now we have the backup file on the iCloud drive and the file size is 67 megabytes. This is actually smaller compared to the file, to the same file on the iPad for some reason. It's exactly the same file except when it's online, it's smaller. I'm, I'm not sure why. Anyway, I'm going to rename this file. Rename it as Backup. And now I'm back on Procreate and now I'm going to delete the video. So let me just turn this off. So it will tell you to purge the video and I've just purged the video and now let's take a look at the file size again. So earlier on it was 93 megabytes, now it's 59 megabytes. So you can reduce the file size by choosing not to record the time-lapse or choosing to delete the time-lapse video after it has been recorded. Now. I have already backed up this file online, so now I'm going to delete this file. All right, so that file is now gone. Now in order for me to get that file back, I would have to import it back into Procreate and that's actually very simple. So let's open up the iCloud drive. So this file, the backup, this is the one that's online. You can just click it once or you can just drag that file onto Procreate. So when I clicked it once, it will download the file and open it up in Procreate. And when you go back to the gallery, you can see this file is back. And this is the file with the time-lapse recording. This is the backup. 
This is actually not a very big file. Let me show you a bigger file. So this file, it has a resolution of 2 times 4K. This file has multiple layers and this file has more details compared to the earlier file. The file size for this is 350 megabytes. So it goes without saying that if your file has more layers or more details, it's going to take up even more space. So we already know we can save the appropriate file online to either iCloud Drive or Google Drive. We can also choose to save the file to an external drive. So I'm using an iPad Pro here. So I'm going to connect this USB-C adapter to the iPad so that I can use this USB thumb drive that I have been using for the past five years. So I can save this file. Let's go into the settings here and click share and click to share the appropriate file. And we can choose to save to files again. Let's find the external that I have. The external, it's going to take a while to transfer the file over to the external. For some reason, the file transfer took much longer than I expected. But now on the USB drive, we have the file. And we can also see the thumbnail of the file. You can only see the thumbnail on the external and on the iCloud drive, but not from the Google drive for some reason. To be able to see the thumbnail is quite convenient. So this is from the iCloud drive. Let's take a look at Google drive. And this is what we see, just a procreate icon without the thumbnail. If you're using the iPad with the lightning port, you may have to get the lightning to USB adapter or just get one of those lightning USB thumb drives. By the way, there is actually a difference between iCloud Drive and iCloud. iCloud is basically a collection of services that Apple provides and one of those services is called iCloud Drive. iCloud Drive is just like Google Drive. You can create files, folders, upload and download files. It's just a file system online. So to answer the second part of the question, when you run out of storage on an iPad with a small storage capacity, you can choose to transfer the appropriate files to an external drive or to the iCloud drive. I actually recommend transferring to the iCloud drive to the cloud because the transfer speed is much faster and also it's much safer. There is still a chance for you to lose your external drive somehow, but if your files are online, it's always going to be there unless you forget your password. So after you transfer the Procreate files online, you can then delete the Procreate files on your iPad to free up the storage space. And when you run out of space on the iCloud drive, you can choose to get more storage. So for 50 gigs of storage, it's almost $1 US per month. And if you run out of 50 gigs of storage, you can upgrade to 200 gigs of storage, which is three US dollars a month or 36 US a year. What's good about this is you can upgrade as and when you need it. So I highly recommend getting the 50 gigs for just one US dollar a month. This will help back up your iPad. And when you run out of space on your iPad, you just have to transfer your files online. And if you run out of space online, just upgrade. So if you really have limited budget, you can actually just get the iPad with the smallest storage capacity and expand your storage online. The difference is you don't have to spend the 100 or 150 US dollars upfront to pay for more storage on your iPad. With iCloud, you pay a much smaller amount of money each month. All right, let me know in the comment section below what you think. Did you get an iPad with the smaller storage capacity or do you pay up front to get an iPad with more storage? I would love to hear from you and also I would love to find out how much storage you are using on the iPad that you have bought. All right, thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.